Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Final Cut Pro finally is available for iPad. Apple launched this as a new app today for the iPad along with Logic Pro. Now I've been using Final Cut Pro long enough to edit a couple different videos on my iPad to get a very good understanding. I've actually been using Final Cut Pro on Mac since Final Cut Pro 6. Logic Pro is available as well, however I'm not as familiar with that. But I thought we'd take a look at Final Cut Pro. It's $4.99 per month or $50 per year and Logic Pro is again another $4.99 per month. So if you want to use these, they are paid apps. You'll also need a supported device. So for Final Cut Pro on iPad, Apple says that you'll need a 12.9 inch iPad Pro 5th generation, 11 inch iPad Pro 3rd or 4th generation, or iPad Air 5th generation. You'll also need iOS 16.4 or later. So basically M1 and M2 iPad Pro, or the iPad Air with the M processor in it, or Apple Silicon. Now this is actually an M2 iPad Pro, with Apple Pencil Hover and has 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. So it should be really good on here. Now I've been using it for a little while. Like I said, if we go into Final Cut Pro, you'll see I have a couple different projects here. The projects on the left, one in particular, I fully re-edited the iOS 16.5 is out video to see what it was like hundred percent re-edited on here, you'll see it's 23.28 gigabytes. And to get that footage on the iPad is not as nice as if you have a MacBook Pro or Mac Studio, but I did use my four terabyte OWC drive. You just plug it in and then you can import your footage. It works fine for that, but it doesn't allow you to bring in a project from the Mac. Unfortunately, you'll actually be able to move this project from the iPad to the Mac, but you can't go the other direction. So I found that out pretty quickly. So I decided to re-import the footage off of this drive, go into the different folder, and then just bring in the footage to the iPad. You cannot edit it directly from an external drive. You have to import everything to the iPad. So that's something that maybe will change in the future. This is very much an early version of Final Cut Pro, but it does work pretty well in general. Now I have a couple different projects here I'd like to talk about. One in particular, it's Sony footage. It's actually 10-bit 420 footage, and it's at 4K60, brought down to 4K30. The next one is actually Canon 8K30 footage. And then the other one is just an example you could download when you open it up for the first time. So you can start a new project and you have a bunch of different options here. It's pretty simple, very similar to what you have on Mac. You can name your project, go in here, have some custom options for resolution. You can put in custom numbers as well and change the color space. It defaults to HLG or HDR, which is a bit of a pain as I had to go back later and change that. It doesn't actually sense what the footage is. I had to actually change that and I find that to be a little odd. Let me unplug the drive here and we'll go in and edit this timeline. So you'll see here, it brought it over. It was a little bit slow and you'll see as I just scrub through the footage, it's pretty fluid now. So I can go through this, drag my finger across the timeline and it works as you would expect. Like I said, I fully recreated my iOS 16.5 is out video here. I just imported the old footage and then re-edited it. So you can see I have some titles here. So if I hit play, use the space bar to hit play, it animates in. Now I can't use third party plugins just yet. Motion VFX is something I use a lot along with some others. They're not available yet, but hopefully will be in the future. But we do have some options in the upper right. So you have different things such as backgrounds and objects and titles. So I just use those for this video. Now with editing this, this is 4K footage. Like I said, it's very smooth. I can just kind of scrub through the timeline here and you can also use the Apple Pencil if you have one to use Apple Pencil Hover. You just bring it across the timeline and it's pretty fast. So that's really nice that it just moves right along here pretty quickly. And one thing you can do with the Apple Pencil while I was editing, was actually draw on the image and have it animate. So that's something you can't do with the Mac that I actually enjoyed here. So let's go here, we'll hit play. You'll see here in the footage, give it a second. As I show the footage, it draws in a circle right there. Now, if you wanna do that, all you have to do is at the top, tap this little icon to draw, and then I can circle anything I want. So I could select whatever marker I want. I can put, do a big circle there, maybe do another one right here, and then it will animate in all by itself. And then you can actually change the duration of it just by tapping the edge handles here and moving back and forth. So if I hit play, you'll see that animate in, and just like you would expect, it works like you want, or you can just get rid of it altogether. So that's something I think is really great and very helpful when you're trying to point something out.
Now, one thing when using this, it's not like Final Cut Pro at all on the Mac. It's a little bit different, more optimized for touch. And it took me a little bit to figure out how to actually clip something or, or splice a clip. So if I want to make a cut right here, you can use these buttons in the bottom, right? You can't just swipe, not that I've found anyway, and you can't just use the keyboard shortcuts to bring up the blade with B and then click to actually cut there. Hopefully they'll bring that in the future, but that doesn't work right now. You actually have to push these buttons to make a cut. You can use things such as command Z to undo, but for whatever reason, you can't do that. Now, as I edit through, I typically edit in two X. You can use L to speed through the footage that way. And it worked really well. Now, a few things that were a little tricky is you have to bring up the inspector to do different things. So maybe I want to change this clip. What I can do is go in here and then we have access to different things such as the speed, the color. And if we go over here, we can move it around and then we can color correct if we want. So this is just done automatically, which is nice. But if we want to actually color correct, we have to go into the effects, add a color adjustment adjustment, then we can change it. So this took a little bit of time to figure out where it is. I actually had to look at the manual to do it. Then you can adjust this. You can go to your waveforms here. So your video scopes with waveform, let's get rid of that. You can see your waveforms and they're not correct because I, they, I just overexposed them, but you get the idea as this is very different than the desktop version. If you're used to color correcting. So it's a little trickier to get used to, but it's really nice once you figure it out and it's optimized for touch. I'm sure once you use it enough, you get used to it. The same is true with volume. There's separate buttons here at the bottom and you can adjust those with the inspector. So once you tap on volume, it switches between what you're working on. So if we go back here and then go back again to volume, you can then adjust the volume, add loudness or whatever you'd like. You can add those effects. You also have the option to animate and then you have multicam as well. And I tried some multicam footage as that's how I was able to sync regular footage with audio as well. So if we go out and go into this project, which is a video I haven't released yet, but this is a project here with, you'll see Apple watch ultra. And if we go back and forth, this actually doesn't play back very well because initially it's 8k footage, then it's synced with multicam so that it actually has the audio synced up with the footage with a different microphone. So that's something I did here. And what you'll see is if I hit play in different areas, it takes a second to play. It's very slow. It comes in like this. And once we hit a transition, it blanks out even after rendering it. So we'll give it a second. It will do the same. And we even get a message. At least I did when we go here into this part of the timeline. And you can see here, it says playing back this portion of the timeline exceeds this device's memory limits. Try reducing the number of clips or the media resolution. So again, this is actually 8k brought down to 4k and it can't use two, two clips on top of one another. I actually had to go into this timeline here, find the in and out point, find out where I want it here and then drop it here to make sure I had it in the right place. It was very tricky to edit because of that. So that's something that maybe they'll update in the future, but it is pushing very high end footage through here. It's actually 8k footage 420, 10 bit footage from a Canon. So this is something that just doesn't work that well. Hopefully they'll update it in the future, but you can see how choppy it is as I play. So if I play back, it takes a second. And it's just really, really slow. In fact, editing this 8k footage, I had this crash. I had things disappear. It was very buggy. So it works much better on standard 4k footage. So that's just something I wanted to point out. I don't know how many people will edit 8k footage. It just gives you the option to kind of zoom in, but I did find I had an issue with it. I also had an issue with external display support. What I mean by that is if I plug this into an external display, it doesn't go full screen. I can only edit it in a window like you have with everything else. So even with stage manager, it just didn't let me edit it in full screen. I can't expand it or anything else. So that was a bit of a disappointment. Again, this is more of a 1.0 version of the software. Now I did export the iOS 16.5 footage just to see what it was like, fully exported it. And it took about six minutes. So the total timeline length here is about 10 minutes and 32 seconds with all the titles, my watermark over the top of it. It took about six seconds or six minutes rather to export it 
I had no issues with that. It was nice and fast. It exported and then it let me save the video. So if you just push export here, you can do video audio only, and then you have different options for what it wants you to export with. So you'll see the resolution is 4096 by 2048. It's in SDR, and then you can select HEVC and all sorts of other resolutions. So if you want ProRes or anything else, and then it gives you different examples of what you should use this footage for. So this one actually says YouTube and Vimeo, the one below it, social platforms actually says Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. So you can fully edit all of those here. And there's a lot of other features built into this. If you want to use a lot of different title effects or transitions, backgrounds, even soundtracks, it works really well. And it sort of fades in and out the soundtrack as you extend it, but it works pretty well and it's not great yet. It's not something I can use full time as it's lacking some plugins and is a little too buggy for me to use for a few different types of footage that I use sometimes with 8k footage. But if you're using it for 4k footage with an iPhone or you're using a Sony camera or any camera in 4k, it should be just fine with this. Now, a few things it can't do is it doesn't have markers. That's something I use a lot. You hit M, it puts down a marker and kind of lets you build a title or chapters when you're actually making the video. So you can't do that. You also don't have third party plugins, like I said, or stabilization. So if you want to stabilize some footage, you just can't do it. So I think this is more of a 1.0 version and it will be updated in the future, but so far it's pretty good and it works really well with the footage. If we go into my photos, you can see here's the actual video. So it's playing, it's the iOS 16.5 is out. What's new video and it works fine. You can fully use this to edit your different footage and everything else for YouTube. So hopefully, like I said, in the future, it will support more. The footage looks great. It works as you would expect. And I think it will be a great addition to iPad, but I think there's more to come maybe with larger iPads in the future or just some changes to the overall design of this. So it's very much touch first. This is just a first impressions. I've been using it for a little bit to use these different projects but I think it's a good first start. I don't know that I want to pay $5 per month for it just because I'll probably just bring a MacBook with me as I'm much faster editing there. It does take some time to get used to actually using a timeline that's touch based, but if you have Luma fusion or maybe DaVinci resolve, those might be better for you as they may actually do some things that final cut pro doesn't, but let me know what you think about final cut pro on the iPad. Have you tried it out? Will you be using it? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. There's a bunch of other features as well that this does, but the main features that I use, I wanted to go through and make sure I could actually edit on it. So I can, but it doesn't have everything I want just yet. So, Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is you can go frame by frame in the playhead. So you can use this little dial here and jump very accurately back and forth. So they've brought in a lot of tools to make it really nice to use, but with an external monitor, it doesn't work well for me. And I'm just so used to editing on a big screen. This is a little challenging, but let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. And there's much more to talk about. If you want me to do a full tutorial from start to finish, let me know that as well in the comments. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do for the iPhone. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.